There's a lot to consider when purchasing the wall board for your home. You might want to use different types of boards in different parts of your house. We're out in the garage area and we're ready to hang rock. So we're using some 5 8 inch rock, which is required by fire code. In case a fire ever starts in the garage, it'll give you time to get out of the house instead of just the fire blowing through the whole house. But we're using some stuff that's extra heavy and extra thick. If you look here, you can see just how thick that paper is. It's not like normal paper on both sides of the gypsum. The reason for that is if kids run a bike into a garage wall or you throw open your car door, maybe up in a game room where you have pool cues hitting it or kids throwing balls against the wall, it's not going to break. Any type of area like that, you may as well go ahead and spend the money. It's about two and a half times as much as a normal piece of drywall, but it's well worth it because you don't have to come back and make repairs. Okay. Last season, we tested this impact resistant drywall up at U.S. Gypsum's labs outside Chicago. You can hit the drywall with a lot more weight and a lot more force than you're ever likely to at home before it even begins to start showing signs of impact. Here's another example of a place you need to pay special attention when installing drywall. Drywall is very heavy and over time it can start to sag down from the ceiling. And out in this garage, it's actually pulled loose. It's falling out all over the whole garage. Now there is a way to avoid this problem where you won't get nail pops and cracks and all kinds of bad looks on your ceiling. Now they make a super light, half inch thick drywall that you can hang on your ceilings and over time it will not begin to sag. If you put the right amount of nails in it, it's going to stay up there forever. It's not much more expensive, just a little bit, but it's super, super light. And you don't have to worry about any impacts up on your ceiling so you're not going to hurt it. If you're wondering just how much lighter these new ceiling panels are, they only weigh about 73 pounds a piece and that makes them about 30% lighter than ordinary ceiling board. If you've had experience handling wallboard overhead, believe me, you're going to appreciate the difference when you start hanging the stuff on the ceiling. Special additives in these panels make them stronger. That's why they can be made much thinner, but still resist sagging much better than ordinary drywall. Even in high humidity climates, or in rooms where you want to use a heavy textured finish, these lighter ceiling panels will provide better protection against sagging. Just make sure you space screws no more than 12 inches apart, or if you're using nails, be sure to drive them in no more than seven inches apart. Now we've been calling this drywall, a lot of people call it sheetrock, but sheetrock is actually a brand name, just like Kleenex. Sheetrock belongs to USG. Wallboard or drywall, or gypsum, that's the proper name, but sheetrock is actually a trademark name for one company. Once you have the right drywall selected for every area of your home, it's just as important to make sure you hang it properly. When you hang drywall, it's always best to do the ceiling first, bring it all the way against your frame wall, and then hang your drywall on the wall. So this gives you a good, clean corner. Now on this wall, it's 10 feet high, so that means we need three pieces of rock. We have a four foot wide, another four foot wide, and then down here at the bottom, we have a two foot wide piece of rock. That means we had to cut one in half. When you cut one in half, you don't wanna put it in the middle of the wall or at the top. You wanna put it down here at the bottom. That way, we're not gonna see our cut edge. This is the roughest edge. The factory edge is smooth, but this edge down at the bottom, we're going to cover it up with our trim when the trim guy gets here and finishes the walls, so we're not going to see the bad part. Now, where the pieces come together, you're going to have a joint, and you're going to have to put tape and mud on that and feather it out to make it look smooth so you don't line them up. This next piece coming up, we staggered it so the joints don't line up. And then back here again, the joints on the same line. That way it's not going to be as visible to the eye when you walk in the room. Once the wall is totally finished, it's going to look smooth and you won't ever see one continuous line down the wall of your home. Installing your own drywall is probably a job for the more ambitious do-it-yourselfer. And it's a good idea to line up at least one helper too, especially for installing those ceiling panels. But whether you do the work yourself or hire a contractor to do the work, choose the right drywall for every interior space. It can make a world of difference for years to come in your new house.